I was a little bit more than a year ago that I built this sharpening jig right here. And it's great for sharpening any size chisel. And you can also sharpen hand plane irons in there up to about two and a half inches wide. The one drawback with it is that it is kind of bulky, especially if you just want to sharpen, you know, your standard size chisels from say one quarter inch right up to one inch. Those are the ones that I mainly use. I know that I have one and a half inch chisels, but I rarely use them. So I gave it some thought and I came up with a simpler design and it will work with chisels that are a quarter inch wide right up to one inch. Like the bigger one, I have plans available for this. And the first thing that I did was I printed those off so I can cut out all the parts. I've already done that. And now I can start assembly. I'm going to get started with the base of the sharpening jig itself. It's very simple. I made mine from hardwood on the size maple actually. And for the platform here, I used a piece of three quarter inch plywood. Although any material will work. I want to avoid um, saw wood here because it'll uh, expand and contract too much and loosen or tighten around the stone too much. So the way this works is this will all just get glued together and then I'll fire some pins in to hold it together until the glue sets. The base is made to fit the stone that you're going to use for this. In my case, I've got one that's two inches wide and eight inches long. The recommended size for this jig is a shorter stone, actually, it's two by six. But whatever one you happen to have uh, will work as long as it's big enough. It really needs to be of a minimum size. And the way this should fit in is that it should fit in there fairly snugly. I've got it kind of pinched tighter up here at the top. I cut this piece a little bit shorter so it goes in and holds it in place because you don't want this moving around while you're sharpening. No matter what size stone you use, what you're shooting for here is for the top of this stone to be as flush as possible with the surface of this base. It's also not a bad idea to take the base now and give it a coat of something to make it waterproof if you're going to be using a water stone with this jig. The next step in the assembly is to glue the two quarter inch threaded rods into parts A and B. And I'm using fast setting epoxy to glue those on there. Okay, now I need to let these dry and I've put a piece of masking tape down on my bench. So that this one's standing up vertically like this. This has to be square as possible to the piece. And it should be that actually because if you drill the hole straight and it's a good snug fit with the uh, threaded rod, it will hold it up at 90 degrees. The other one has to be sticking out 7 eighths of an inch and I've already measured that. It's going to wipe off the excess epoxy on the outside as much as I can. I gave the epoxy about a half an hour to dry and it came up easily from the workbench because of the masking tape. Now these two parts go together and they should line up properly. This piece needs to slide in fairly freely. If it's tight at all, just use the actual threaded rod as a file to enlarge the hole just enough so that it slides you know easily. I've taken side A and B and put them together with the wing nut here just temporarily to check the alignment between the two and I can see that I'm slightly off. It's very difficult to get this lined up perfectly on the first try so this step is probably going to be necessary for everyone. So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to take it and put it in my vise and I'm going to plane those surfaces flat and true with each other. Now that I have these two parts lined up perfectly and tuned up properly, I can add the pieces to the front here and they overhang on the inside by an eighth of an inch. And once again, I'm going to use fast setting epoxy for this, mainly because it's very difficult to clamp these parts and not have them slide around all over the place. So I'm just going to use masking tape to hold them in until the epoxy sets. I gave the epoxy about an hour to dry and when I took the masking tape off I saw I had a little bit of squeeze out in the corner there so I just scraped that out with the chisel. The next thing I need to do is make sure that there's enough space, uh, that there's not too much space in there for the smallest chisel I plan to use with that and that's the quarter inch and that should go in and then when it clamps tight there should still be a gap between the two sides so that it can grip onto the chisel properly. The next step is to glue this part onto here and then I'll put a screw in just to make sure it never comes off again. This has to be spaced one eighth of an inch from the end here. The spacing is not critical but I figured out an easy way to do that and that's to use two 
one eighth inch drill bits, just lay them on the bench like that, set the part down on top of it, and then I can use those to space it up while I glue this part on with super glue. I put that one eighth inch drill bit in here to drill a pile hole. And then I'll drive a one and a quarter inch screw in, and that will hold the part together so that it will never come off. I trust the glue, but not as much as I trust the glue and the screw. Okay, with that done, the jig is now finished. All I need to do is put the two sides together. I've got the washer and the wing nut to put on this one on the side, and that's what you know clamps onto the chisel itself. The one at the back here determines the width of the chisel you're going to use. That's adjustable as well. And it sets at one eighth of an inch. I need to make marks on the top here. There's details on that in the build article. It's easier to show that in pictures than in video actually. And it's ready to go. I'm going to give it a try. The way I designed this was to make this as easy to use as possible. I had this type of stone in particular in mind when I designed it. That's the type of stone that has two different grits, one on one side and one on the other. That way you can make it in the same thickness as the stone. And if you want to use the fine side like that, flip it over, use the coarse side without changing anything. So it's really fast. So I'm going to start on the coarse side. I've already got my chisel put in here, but I'll take it out again just to show you how that works. First thing you need to do is set the end here so that the gap between the two sides is the same thickness as the chisel like that. Now I've cut a uh, spacer, I guess you could say, and the jig will sit on that like this, and that'll space it up one eighth of an inch. All I did was cut a piece of hardwood to one eighth of an inch on the table saw from a longer piece to make it safe. And then with the wing nut loosened, you slide the chisel in until it contacts the surface of the thing here. And then you're holding it tight with your fingers while you're tightening the wing nut. Now after I've taken the time to get that settled in there correctly and made sure it's up against the back of these properly and the right angle, I'm just going to use my spacer stick here, which I plan on keeping. And I'm going to hold it up against the back of the chisel like that. And then I'm going to use a very sharp pencil to make a mark on the front here. And what that will do will be a guide from now on. All I need to do is use that to check the get or to set the depth of the chisel because they're going to be always the same doesn't matter what width it is it'll always wind up being the same uh, amount sticking up now i can go ahead and sharpen this and um, there's not a whole lot to that it works just the same way as that metal type one that it kind of emulates but it's better than that because it will not rock forward i had one of those a long time ago and the biggest issue I had with it was rolling over on the thing and also wobbling quite a bit because the contact point where it actually rolls is a wheel on the bottom and that's rolling on the stone as well. So not the best solution overall. I like this a lot better. It rolls or it rides on the back here and that keeps the chisel square to the stone without any chance of it ever rolling over or rounding over the chisel. And as you can see, there's no problem whatsoever to use the entire surface of the stone, so that'll minimize uneven wear. Okay, after I finished on the coarse side of the stone, I can flip it over and do the secondary bevel. The secondary bevel is what would, could be called a micro bevel on the front. And there's a couple of different ways to do that. You can either pull the chisel back a little bit and that'll create that extra angle on the front. Or you can lift up the back. I've got a block here, and it really doesn't take long at all to establish that secondary bevel. Another real advantage to this jig is that you don't actually need a stone. You can use sandpaper and not use the base at all. You can set it up on your workbench, a piece of flat stock, like a piece of glass even. Just tape your sandpaper down to it like I have here. In this case, I've got a one inch chisel here that I need to do a lot of work on. And to do it on the stone would take a long time. So I've got some heavy grit sandpaper here and I'm gonna do the majority of the grinding on that. And then I can switch to a much finer sandpaper and get that secondary bevel that I want. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. 
Like I said in the beginning, there are plans available on my website. There's a link in the description that will take you there. You can get one of your own to build this for yourself. Also, if you want any more detail on how I did this, the build article is also on my website. There's a link to that as well in the description. As usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.